This video documents the disassembly and reassembly of a Barlow 22 two-speed winch. The first step is to remove the Allen head screw in the top center portion of the winch. Once the center screw has been loosened and removed, or at least loosened, you can then pull the winch up off of the hub, exposing the bearing and the spindle beneath it. You'll notice in the top of the winch, there are the two pawls that perform the uh, camming action. This winch is a two-speed because the pawls in the top engage and lock the winch in one direction, and then another set of pawls underneath the spindle lock and engage the winch and a gear at the bottom when you turn the winch handle in the opposite direction. You'll want to remove the center bushing and then you can pull the top pawl assembly clear of the winch. The pawls should stay in that assembly. Um, and then once you've gotten that loose, you can see one of the pawls has already sort of come loose of its own. You want to pull those pawls out very carefully because the springs can get away from you and if you're not working in a confined space, they'll pop out and end up on the side deck of the boat or over the side. It's important to note the arrangement of the spring and the pawl. There is a longer bent edge to the spring and a shorter straight edge. You want the shorter straight edge to go in the recess in the indent in the pawl so that then when you place the pawl back into the assembly the longer angled piece will lay flat against the inner portion there of the spindle. Sometimes it can take a bit of fiddling to get things to go back into place. By the way, I used kerosene to clean the winches. Um, I first used it on our Cape Dory 36 back when we first bought her about 12 years ago, and it worked well. The next step will be to pull the roller bearings off of the spindle assembly and then from there what you will need to do is to remove the four allen head screws that secure the spindle assembly to the base of the winch. It should be fairly straightforward to unscrew each one of those four allen head screws. And if you're doing this on the boat, it's a good idea to make sure that you put something next to the tow rail to keep any items from going overboard accidentally. It would be easy to get the bolts confused if you weren't paying attention, so note that the bolt that holds the head of the winch in place is a little bit shorter than the four that attach the spindle to the hub. Once all four of the screws are removed, you can then slide the spindle off of the lower portion of the hub assembly. And then you'll notice this is the lower pawl action for the two-speed winch. So there you have the pawls and you have the ratcheting mechanism. And then you'll notice at the bottom of that center piece with the pawls on it, there is also a gear. That gear engages the lower gear, which in turn spins the drum assembly. 
giving you a gear reduction rather than a direct drive. Here you can see the way in which the pawl spring lays flat against that center piece and how the shorter straight piece falls right into that indent in the pawl. Removing the pawls, again, you want to be careful that you don't lose track of the pawl spring. Replacements are available for most winches, um, but if your pawl springs are in good shape, there's no reason not to keep track of them and reuse them. Here you can see, again, the shorter straight edge and the longer bent or angled edge you'll want to place the short edge into the pawl just as you see there. And once it comes time to put things back together after you've cleaned all the parts really well with a toothbrush and kerosene, it takes a little bit of fiddling. And it can be a little bit frustrating and sometimes your fingers feel a little bit fat and it can be beneficial if you have like a small slotted screwdriver or other pointy device to help hold the spring in its place while you try to slide that pawl back into the assembly. Here it took quite a bit more fussing than I really wanted it to, but sometimes that's the nature of the beast. Once the pawls are back in place, it's a good idea to check that they function smoothly and freely. This lower gear here, you'll know it, note it has a, a sort of raised portion that goes face down and provides a bearing surface, sort of a bushing for the gear to spin on so that the whole surface is not rubbing on the base of the winch. Reassembly is just the opposite of the disassembly. It helps as you're placing these ratcheting mechanisms over the pawls to sort of turn them in the direction that they are intended to spin. Once you have it back in place, you can check the function and the movement by spinning it. It should lock in a counterclockwise direction and spin freely with good clear clicking coming from the pawls when you spin it in a clockwise direction. Place the spindle assembly back atop the hub. Reinstall the four fasteners, tightening them down moderately. I don't think that you need to crank down on them too tight. Snug should be adequate. I suppose if there were any doubt, a small dab of blue Loctite would probably be enough. The bearing assembly should be lightly greased with a special winch grease and then placed back on the spindle. All of the pawls should, use, should have a light dab of oil, but not a lot of grease or a heavy grease because that will just gum them up and then the pawls won't work. Really it's probably better to use less, you know, in this case less is more for the pawls. When it comes to putting this upper pawl assembly back in place, it helps to turn it in the direction uh, it wants to spin freely so that the pawls can find their way up inside of the winch drum. Once in place, you can give the assembly a little bit of a turn to make sure that the pawls are moving freely and locking into place as they should.
You can see the cam action here as they lock into place. Slide the drum assembly back over the bearings and the spindle. Rotate it until the hex opening there slides in place over the center spindle. Drop the bushing back down inside the center. Install your Allen head screw and you are done. With everything properly cleaned, greased, and oiled, you should get a crisp, clean clicking sound once you're done. <laughs>